for heat number one then and it's uh, Oxford in the red shirts on gates are one and three Paul in blue shirts off gates two and four we've already had one restart in this one with a big first bend pile up and they get away cleanly this time or as cleanly as you'll ever get for the restart of the first race and immediately it's Lewis Osborne who takes the lead Thomas Reed from Paul chasing him down with Sam Hearn in the third place it's all square at this stage of the race as uh, Reed continues his quest to get points at the expense of Lewis Osborne and a big challenge there and down they come on the first bend referee stopped that one let's hear what his verdict's going to be and he's pointing to the Oxford rider, Lewis Osborne, as the cause of that stoppage. And here you can see why. A trailing leg causes a Reed to take a tumble. And that's a pretty poor start for the Oxford defending champions. But a great start for Paul, who are going to have two riders to Oxford's one in the restart of the race. And it's poor old Errol Thor there in the middle, who's going to be potentially the meat in the Paul sandwich as they get underway with the restart of the race. What can Paul do then? Can they capitalise on the misfortune of the visiting uh, Oxford team? As the restart gets underway and away they go immediately and once again it's Reed from the outside grid who makes an early challenge. Looking round for his team partner Sam Hearn who comes into the lead as Errol Thor there desperately tries to hold off the uh, team riding efforts of Thomas Reed, but Paul now away to a maximum 7-2 start. They couldn't possibly have dreamt of a better start to this match and it's seven points to Paul and two to Oxford. Well, Oxford are going to have to fight back in the second race to uh, try and nullify that home advantage. And Sam Hearn comes back into the pits there, a very happy man for the Paul Seaview coaches team. And he gets welcomed back by his teammates. How important is it to open with a 7-3? Brilliant, yeah. Get the team spirit up and get us on a high. Tell, tell everyone else what we're made of. Well, on the line for this one, we've got Greg Rukowski, the captain of the Paul uh, Seaview coaches team, on the inside gate, but it's the ex-British champion Mark Bowler who poses the biggest threat for Oxford on gate two, as away they go. And it's Rukowski who goes into an immediate lead, challenged by Bowler, holds on to it. Meantime, Matty Shimshak comes right round for Oxford as Aaron Morgan, British junior champion, makes a desperate attempt to pass Bowler. And at the moment, it's all square 5-5, five, five, but Morgan comes through. Bowler lets him go, comes back underneath him. Good bit of riding there by the uh, Oxford rider to uh, stamp out the attempts by Morgan to uh, get into third place. So at the moment, the race is shared 5-5. Five, five. Remember, it's 4-3-2-1 scoring in Cycle Speedway. And this one's going to end up all square as they take the chequered flag. Kukowski, the race winner. Matty Shimshak in second place. Mark Bowler third. And Aaron Morgan there. A valiant effort to get up into uh, third place. But he was stamped out. And uh, that makes the score 12 points to Paul and 7 to Oxford after three races. Well, it's a home debut for the ex-world champion, and that's a Polish superstar, Martin Szymanski, who starts from gate four. His uh, riding colleague for Paul will be the Southampton-based rider, Tom Colling. And uh, they're put under orders, and Colling there looks to have got his marching orders. Rules of Cycle Speedway, very, very strict indeed. Any movement at the tapes will result in a rider's exclusion. And you can see there that Colling goes back to the pits. And that leaves uh, Szymanski to face the uh, powerful uh, Oxford pairing of Mark Carmichael, the Welsh international, and Lewis Bates in the restart of the race. What can Szymanski do then? As they put under start of orders, away they go. And that's a pretty strong first bend from Szymanski. In fact, it's Brilliant first bend by Szymanski because he goes around both of the Oxford riders. Well, really difficult thing to do from the gate four position, the least favoured starting gate position, but Szymanski made light work of it, and here he is leading home the two Oxford riders in the restart of Heat 3, and it's going to be a 5-4 race advantage to Oxford, but nevertheless, very much a case of damage limitation by the home side there as their new man and uh, top star Martian Szymanski shows just why the pool club were so keen to signing on for the uh, 2012 season but just let's hear what uh, Martian's team partner Tom Collins got to say about that exclusion. I thought look grid one had a little bit of a twitch and I don't really feel like I moved a lot myself my whole point didn't go it's more just my arms 
but it was a fair decision for the referee to exclude me. We move on to heat number six now with Paul just holding a slender lead, 25 points to 23, but they have the inside advantage in this race with Tom Colling and uh, his partner Martian Szymanski, Victor in his opening ride. It's Mark Bowler and Matty Shimshak for Oxford on gates two and four and another key race at this stage of the match as they came into the first bend. Paul looking for a maximum start, which looked like they've got, but... Uh, it's Tom Colling who gets caught out by the Oxford pairing and he's now back in third place and Bowler catches him on the back wheel going into turn one and the race is stopped. Referee points the finger towards Bowler to return to the pits as the cause of that exclusion stoppage and uh, he's back in the pits now protesting his innocence along with his teammates and uh, it looks like there's going to be a restart of the race with two Paul riders and only one Oxford rider. Bowler far from happy with that. Uh, he felt he uh, was the innocent victim in that tumble, but I think the uh, replay might show otherwise as we see Colling here clipped on the back wheel. Bowler tries to switch, just mistimes it, brings down the Paul rider and uh, referee had a fairly easy decision to make as we look at the restart now and this should be a bread and butter race for the pool side with Samatsky holding off the challenging Shimshak while Tom Colling gets away out in front and it looks like it's going to be a 7-2, another 7-2 for the pool side and that's going to give them a 7 point race advantage. 32 points to 25 now, the home side leave after that 7-2. Let's hear what Mark Bowler's got to say. Well, it's now heat seven, and with that seven-point advantage, Oxford know that they've got to do something in this one, and they've got the pairing of Mark Carmichael and Lewis Bates, and then they will come on the first bend. A common sight in cycle speedway, first bend bunching there, and the referee is going to call them back, and it's going to be a restart with all four riders. Shake of the hands there. No ill feelings between uh, Tom Reed and uh, Lewis Bates. So they'll come back to the line for a restart, and uh, certainly Oxford will be be keen to wipe out some of that seven point deficit they won't want to be getting behind this early in the match as this time it's a clean start Carmichael's first to show for the Oxford club and it's uh, Thomas Reed in second place Lewis Bates third Sam Hearn at the back 6-4 enables the uh, Oxford uh, team to recover some of that deficit they trail now by five points We've got Greg Grukowski up next, uh, the pool captain, Victor early on, and his partner, Aaron Morgan. And uh, we've got Lewis Osborne on the outside gate there. And the reserve replacement ride coming in for Sean Rudman. Could he be a key rider in this race as Oxford seek to narrow the margin even further? But the takes now, and away they go. And Rudman indeed does get a very good start from the inside there, leads the pool pairing, tries to shut the door on Morgan, but that just allows Grukowski to come round a lot of them and into the lead. Rudman still having a battle with Morgan there, and it seems that he's shut off the uh, young pool rider, but uh, looks like he could be a share of the spoils this time, because Greg Lukowski out in front, Osborne hot on his tail in second place, then it's Rudman. Can they catch the pool captain, or will Paul uh, pick up a shared race here to maintain their current advantage? Coming round into the final lap, Lukowski pretty swift round his home circuit there. Rudman tries a last bend, do or die effort, it doesn't come off, Osborne in second place then, it's a 5-5 race result and it makes a score now, after that one, Pool 41, Oxford 36. We're on to heat nine now, the uh, last race before the interval of this 18 heat match and Pool still holding that advantage, what can Oxford do, can they get a heat advantage before the break? Away they go then, and that's Chris Osborne into the lead from uh, Tom Colling. Mark Bowler there, as always, in the thick of the action. He's in third place. And we've got Leighton Glover for the home side, uh, attempting an inside pass. Well, he's certainly attempting an inside pass, but uh, he had to take a shortcut. 
The referee instructed riders to revert to their original positions and so Bola is back into third place. Doesn't look too happy. Glover's got to do it all again from the back and at the moment Horsepath holding on to a 6-4 race advantage. One lap to go then, and uh, Chris Osborne well out in front, Tom Colling in second place, Mark Bowler there just making sure he gets the two points for a third place, and it's Leighton Glover at the back. A 6-4 then to Oxford, which narrows the half-time score to pool 45, Oxford 42. Let's catch a quick word now with Martin Szymanski, a former world champion, who's making his debut here at Harborside Park today. So we pick up the racing after the half-time break with uh, Paul still in the lead by just three points. Nothing between them and is the big guns Thomas Reed and Mark Bowler on the inside starting positions here. And away they go, and whoa, what's happening there on the first bend? Bit of chaos, the referee immediately blows up, and we're going to have a restart of the race with all four riders. Let's see if they can get it clean this time. Away they go, and it's Bowler leaning on to Reed onto the first bend there, and he really mugs the, uh, the Paul rider as uh, the horsepath captain goes into the lead, and Paul looked like they want to take a 5-5 out of this, but Matty Shimshak comes through for Oxford to take over the third place, and uh, Thomas Reed immediately striking back there and having a bit of a battle at the back for third and fourth place while Bowler's way out in front. Sam Hernand is in second place. Thomas Reed now has got his work cut out to uh, keep the, uh, the high-flying pole behind him and this would uh, share the race but at the moment it's a battle for third and fourth place. Thomas Reed still just about holding on and in fact uh, now just moves away to the chequered flag to take the vital two points. Paul then sharing the scores with Oxford that time and it's still just three points between them. 60 to Paul, 57 to Oxford. On to heat 13, see if the uh, visitors and reigning champions can strike back this time. Into the first bend they go. Szymanski making his home debut there. Immediately challenging once again from the outside. Lewis Osborne in the lead for Oxford. The battle for third place once again just as important as Tom Colling and Earl Thor there getting uh, tied up and Thor comes through to take over. Szymanski being left no room whatsoever out in front there and has to take to the outside line as uh, Colling once again looking to challenge Earl Thor. Oh. And Thor gives him a bit of an elbow and Collins clean over the safety fence there. Osborne continuing to lead. Colin over there on the outside of the track. The race being allowed to continue. In fact, the race does continue and Osborne wins it. Szymanski second, Errol Thor third. And uh, looks like Horsepower taking a 6-3 there. The referee saw nothing wrong in that incident. No riders excluded, although there might have been a case for Osborne leaving Szymanski very little room. And certainly be interesting to see how Errol Thor and Tom Collin got tangled up and just why Tom Collin ended up over the safety fence. You can see just a little bit of a nudge there. Colin getting into the loose material, hitting the safety fence. Good job, he's a big strong lad. He also plays rugby for Millbrook, but uh, right at this moment, he's recovering from quite a nasty knock, getting some first aid attention there. Mark Butler, the Oxford captain, just checking him out to make sure he's all right. And Colin, fortunately, coming back to the pits. Well, it'd be interesting to hear what he's got to say. Well, that's the ups and downs of Cycle Speedway. It is a physical contact sport, but what it does mean at this particular moment is that the teams are deadlocked on 63 points apiece. 
And they're away for Heat 14. Sean Runman getting into an early lead there. He uh, certainly traps around uh, Pete Young. And it's Greg Rukowski now who's sitting at the back there covering his team partner. Paul going for a drawn race here. 5-5. Five, five. Mark Carmichael, I'm sure he won't want to be content to sit at the back there. Making a strong challenge on uh, Gukowski now. And uh, Gukowski just about holding on. But uh, it's a real battle royal for third place. Rudman out in front then, and Carmichael coming through, catching Gukowski, but then taking a tumble. Uh, appeals to the referee, but Gukowski uh, continuing in uh, third place. The referee seeing nothing wrong with that, and it's uh, once again a share of the scores, a drawn race, five to each team, and it moves the scoreline on to 68 points to Paul, 68 to Oxford. Well, we're having our fair share of uh, thrills and spills in this second half as uh, both teams trying to struggle for supremacy. Carmichael then just a uh, little bit crestful in that time. He picked himself up for the one point. Good to see that sporting exchange of hands shakes there as they come back into the pits. Well, it's heat 15. Can the deadlock be broken? It's 68 each, and uh, it's uh, Oxford on the inside gates. One and three should have a 7-3 if they can uh, get their act together this time. But there's some movement at the tapes. Referee deliberating on it, and... Looks as if he's pointing to Sean Rodman, yes, on gate three. That is a real blow for Oxford because they had their uh, sight set on a 7-3 and now they've just got one rider to bat it out and that's Lewis Bates. Well, sure, not too happy, but we're on with the rerun. Lewis Bates then has got it all to do for Oxford, and he's certainly uh, glad he got the gate run there. He's got Aaron Morgan and Leighton Glover on his tail, but the two poor uh, youngsters are going to have to uh, really work hard if they're going to make any impression on the wily uh, Stoke-based rider, who uh, is uh, out in front comfortably, taking the check and flag. So that's dead damage limitation then for Oxford. Uh, Paul taking a 5-4 to go into a slender lead, 73 points to 7. 22. Still everything to ride for with just three races remaining. On to heat 16. And uh, this time it's Paul on gates one and three. They've got their Tom Tom pairing. That's Thomas Reed and Tom Colling. And uh, Paul will be hoping with the inside starting gates to uh, take a, a race win here and get their noses in front. Colling makes it away from the start with uh, Lewis Osborne in second place. Thomas Reed once again uh, in the thick of the action. He's holding on to Matty Shimshak for uh, third place. This would give Paul a 6 4 race win advantage, but uh, still work to do for Reed. He's uh, been uh, in that position many times in his illustrious racing career, and he holds on to the vital third place. Tom Collin takes the win, and Paul now move into a three-point lead, 79-76, with just two races remaining. It's a nail-biter. Well, Tom Colling there going from zero to hero in that one, as he takes the win, having taken that really bad tumble in his previous race, falling on his ear, literally, and he's taken the four points to set Paul up. So, two heats remaining. What can happen in heat 17? as the riders get their instructions from the team managers. Well, it's uh, Oxford on gates one and three with Lewis Bates once again on the inside. The pool skipper, Greg Krukowski, on gate two. What's, uh, what's his first Ben Tatley going to be? Well, we can see what it is. It's to make a start. He's made the start there. And uh, he's out in front. Sam Hearn there chasing at the back for Paul. And Bates now uh, is in third place. And now Krukowski has got... Uh, None other than uh, Mark Bowler right on his tail. This could be fireworks because we know what Bowler's capable of. And uh, Gukowski there holding on, comes under pressure from uh, Bowler who takes him right off the track there. They both get back on their bikes, but it's the pool skipper who uh, reacts more quickly, gets back into third place. What was a 5-5 race, still a 5-5 because Bates has come through to take it over from Sam Hearn. Gukowski there was... Uh, much the quicker to react as uh, Bowler couldn't recover from that uh, slight uh, altercation and he finishes at the back and it's another drawn race but that really was a controversial moment if Bowler could have held on
on to that. Horsepath could have uh, mounted a 7-3 race result. Bowler here, trademark inside pass. Bukowski caught napping, but as you can see, Bowler just getting into that loose material, loses control. Bukowski manages to cross the outside line. He's allowed to do that because he was given no room on the track and he was uh, quicker to react. But there we are, once again, a shot of Bowler coming through. Bukowski taken right off the track. Bowler slipping. Bukowski picking his pedals up very much more quickly and uh, vital in terms of pull because that enables them to hold on to their three-point advantage with just a race to go. So, who better to have in your final race when you're just a couple of points in front than the former world champion Martian Szymanski. He coming out from gate position number one in this final race. Paul just need to share the spoils in this one. A 5-5 drawn race would mean that they could take the match and for the first time in 11 years, maybe get a win against their great rivals and the reigning league champion. So there you see the scoreline, 84-81 with the heat remaining. Szymanski, he just dropped one point so far this afternoon in his home debut and here he is lining up from gate one, the uh, Oxford uh, pairing who got all the work to do, Mark Carmichael and Chris Osborne. They would be the heroes if they could uh, get a heat win here but they need a 7-3 to win the match. Szymanski uh, getting a pretty Quick start there, Carmichael making a challenge, Osborne making a challenge, Szymanski leading the race and I think it's going to be curtains for the Oxford team as the Hammers are going to have to concede the league points, first time they've done that on this track for many many seasons and could be the presence of this rider out in front, Martian Szymanski from Rochlaw in Poland with a lap to go, leading it home. The home crowd here getting excited at the prospect of a win and uh, he comes round to take the chequered flag. Szymanski, still arguably the top rider in World Cycle Speedway, what a home debut. 19 out of 20 points for the pole and it's Paul that take the league points and uh, very popular amongst his teammates as he comes back into the pits at the end of that race. Heat 18, final score in the match, 89 to Paul, 86 to Oxford. Well, let's hear what team manager Colin Sutton's got to say about that. I'm sure he'll be a very happy man. Well, he's a happy man, and Paul are a happy team as they take the league points. Uh, 18 heats of superb cycle speedway racing, and uh, a last heat decider. It doesn't get much better than that, and we're certainly going to be expecting very much the same in the next BCPG Elite League Racing, which features Wolverhampton and Birmingham, so look out for that one.